This is Carissa Enright. This is the continuation of a series of videos that will cover the medication categories most commonly used in psychiatry. The only medication that is referred to as anti-manic is lithium. Originally used to treat gout in the mid-1800s, lithium proved to improve the manic symptoms of bipolar disorder. We don't know why it works, but it is still very effective. More recently, the antipsychotics and the anticonvulsants have proven effective in mood stabilization. I will cover the antipsychotics in this series, but the anticonvulsants are covered elsewhere in this course. The sound bite for lithium is muscle conduction. To explain the connection, I want you to think back to that chemistry course you took before nursing school. Where is lithium in relationship to sodium on the periodic table? Their atomic weight places them right next to each other. This is very important because inside the body, lithium can substitute for sodium in the nervous system. As you recall, the movement of current down the nerve requires the sodium pump. Lithium, as a substitute for sodium, also participates in the nervous stimulation of the muscles of the body. Therefore, hypernatremia and lithium toxicity have similar effects on muscle conduction. More on that just a bit later. For the moment, I want to talk about how the body regulates the salt we ingest. If this person eats all of these potato chips, how much of that extra salt will be circulating in the body 24 hours later? If the kidneys are doing their job correctly, the salt will be gone. The problem with using a salt as a medication is the kidney. It is exceptionally good at washing out salts. If you dose the medications too far apart, it will wash out before the next dose. Therefore, the patient must take it more than once a day. This presents a problem for many people. In addition, lithium has a narrow therapeutic window. At levels lower than 0.5 milli equivalents per liter have no effect on mood, but if the level goes over 2 milli equivalents, it becomes toxic. With most medications that are toxic in overdose, we teach you the safe dose range, but there are no guidelines for lithium dose. As you can imagine, a therapeutic dose of lithium for the middle person might be too much for either of the other people. Larger people need higher doses than smaller people. Instead, lithium must be monitored through blood levels. The timing of that blood level is important because this level must be 12 hours after the last dose. If you take the level too soon or too late, the level will not be valid. For the purpose of studying, I have simplified the therapeutic range. You need to remember this range, 0.05 to 1.5. If you check different references, this first number could list anywhere from 0.5 to 0.8. And this ceiling number might be anywhere from 1.1 to 1.5. And on nursing exams, toxicity will start at 2.0. All the signs of toxicity are a result of impaired muscle conduction. The person will look drunk, coarse tremor, GI upset, confusion, stumbling, and blurred speech. If the level gets too high, death is usually the result of a heart arrhythmia. Nursing exams, including NCLEX, like to test your understanding of what causes lithium toxicity. Basically, there are only three major reasons for toxicity. The wrong dose of lithium is prescribed or administered, a medical error, 
the patient takes too much lithium, a patient error, or something changes in the patient's body which affects the fluid and electrolyte balance. The kidneys fail to excrete lithium as they try to compensate for a lowering sodium level. Simply put, when the body loses sodium, the kidney tries to prevent hyponatremia by holding back as much sodium as it can. And because lithium looks like sodium to the kidney, it holds back lithium also. Sodium goes down, lithium goes up. Here are the usual reasons for sodium loss. Vomiting and diarrhea, excessive sweating, starting on a diuretic or starting a low salt diet. It's important that this is a new change. People already on a low salt diet are at an equilibrium and the lithium is just dosed accordingly. In the case of dehydration, both lithium and sodium will go up together. And in the case of overhydration, both lithium and sodium will go down together. This slide is a copy of the notes you got in this course for study purposes. All this information is important to study.